Hello everyone, welcome back to Pace Journal. As always, I'm your host Nikhil Tamshanani and joined by the international T20 sensation of a fast bowler, Tamar Mills. Today, obviously coming to the end of the India versus England ODI series, we've got this full in review. Tamal, how are you doing? What a series it was. Welcome to the Pace Journal. Pace Journal. Yeah, good. Thank you, mate. Um, it's been a long tour, as you say. England playing what, four tests, five five T20s, and now three ODI. So, you know, a good shift in in India. That's a lot of games. They packed it into a, a relatively short period of time, but it was a really good tour. Um, I know it was really well viewed over here in England. Lots to talk about. Got some really good uh, viewing figures. Um, and yeah, there was some real standout performances over the over the course of the series. So, um, yeah, it was a really good series. And now. A lot of those guys go straight into into the IPL as well, so uh, no rest no rest for a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna get into that. We've spoke probably a couple of times throughout the series about the preparation for the T Twenty World Cup upcoming. Obviously, you had two white ball series um, where obviously India won both, but England were still competitive in both the ODIs and the T Twenty series. How do you think this is gonna go towards preparing the English side for that tournament come late in the year, which is also in India? Yeah, of course. Obviously, eight games in India in the same year that a, that a World Cup is happening. Ivan Morgan's been very open about that, saying it's great preparation. Obviously, only playing in two stadiums in Ahmedabad and in Pune, but um, look, they, Ahmedabad will definitely be used, and Pune could could also uh, be used as well. So, um, definite learnings from that. Uh, playing, you know, obviously day night games, so you get some contrasting conditions. Bowling in the daytime, bowling in the evening in the ODIs. Um, yeah, and Owen Morgan has been very, very open about that this was an opportunity either for them to learn, for guys to get used to some roles. And, and then in the ODIs, a few other guys to, to get opportunities to to show what they can do. Um, and we'll get into that later on. But, you know, even though they lost both series, uh, the T20s and the ODIs, a huge amount learned. Some guys really put, you know, some eye-catching performances in and, and uh, put themselves forward for, for World Cup selection later in the year. For sure. And in terms of the mental side of things, how difficult do you think it was? It was a very long series. Some of the players were there for, you know, the entire series. And obviously the English cricket board trying to utilize and manage the different players workloads, sending some back home for rest. Um, in terms of the logistical side of things, how tough do you think it was for these players to, to really, you know, deal and manage that bubble and staying in that secure location for such a long period of time? Yeah, look, it's been a big talking point, particularly during the test matches. Guys kind of being rested, flown home, as you say, to get get out of the bubble, get back to seeing families, because it can be tough. Long, long days in, in hotels, getting you know, pretty lonely, if, especially if you're in a bad run of form. Because you, you haven't got that support network around you necessarily and you're stuck in a hotel, you feel like you can't get away. So that's something, as, as we've spoken about, England have been very um, mindful of. Um, one man, Matt Parkinson. I don't know. A lot of guys won't know about him. He's a young, young leg spinner from Lancashire. He's the one person that's been there. Him and Chris Silverwood have been there the whole ter- tour. So that's going back to Sri Lanka. They're into Sri Lanka. They went to Sri Lanka on like New Year's Day, second of January, and he was there as a net bowler throughout the tests in Sri Lanka, the tests, uh, the tests in India. Then he was uh, also a reserve for the T20 series. Then he got in the squad. He was in the squad for the ODI. So people are thinking, okay, he's finally going to get a game. He's probably thinking, finally, after this long time on tour, bowling, I hate to think how many overs he's bowled in the nets. Um, but unfortunately for him, he still didn't get a go. So you got to feel for him. A long time in the nets, leg spinner. A lot of guys intrigued to see how he would potentially go. Um, but it wasn't meant to be for him. And now he's back to England to, to play county cricket. So it can be tough, but also you know you're representing your country you're playing for England and if you're coping all right with it it's it's definitely worse uh, worse situations to be in and I think obviously yes that aspect of it is very difficult but I think it will be you know for a young player like Matt Parkinson who's caused a lot of attention in terms of around his name I think it'll be a fantastic learning curve for him man in those conditions and just being around the English setup as you would know so fantastic to hear um Obviously, a little unlucky that he was unfortunate that he didn't get a game, but still fantastic that he's gained that exposure. Moving on, though, Tamal, um, let's go on to our t- key takeaways because in the last show, we started something new where we gave uh, three of our key takeaways for each team's victory. My team selected India actually ended up winning the series, but we still saw both takeaways play a, a massive part throughout the series. So uh, let's start with one of your takeaways and we'll go back and forth. 
Your first one was looking at the depth of the team, you know, with the likes of Joe Root rested and Chris Walks not there. We saw Owen Morgan, who missed the last two on the internationals. How do you think the depth of the team fared looking ahead at the tournament to now looking in hindsight? Yeah, look, the, the, the point I made really kind of became an important one because, as you say, no Joe Root, no Chris Wokes, no Joffrey Archer. And then in the very first game, both Sam Billings and Owen Morgan ended up getting injured and missing the rest of the series. So guys had to step in that maybe you wouldn't expect to play um, and, and really get, get an opportunity to, to show what they could do. Mo and Ali came back into the side. He obviously missed all of the T20s. There was a lot of chat about that. So Mo and Ali came in and he, you know, he, was, he performed well with the ball. He was really tidy. He, he kept the run rate down. You know, it didn't take a huge amount of wickets, but he, uh, he kept some control in a, in a series that was largely high scoring, um, especially the, the last couple of games. There were some really high scores. So I think Mo and Ali did some, you know, he did a good job of the ball. He, a couple of cameos with the bat, maybe not as, as fluent as, as we've known him to be. Liam Livingston, I think he gave a really good account of himself. He's that, you know, he's, he's fighting to be one of those kind of, you know, last, the last batter, you know, the, the bench batter, the next man in. And there's quite a few guys trying to kind of stand out. And he's very versatile. He can open the batting. He can bat all the way down to number six as well. So he he had some really good cameos. He got a nod out in his in his debut, which was the second ODI to, to help win the game in the run chase. He also can bowl some handy off spin and leg spin. Uh, which we have, we know is very valuable in um, in the subcontinent. So a big tick for him, I think. Reese Topley, big tall left armer. He got to go. Showed some really good skills with the new ball, uh, swinging that around. Um, you know, maybe struggled a little bit towards the middle, and then uh, he put in a few good performances at the death as well. So he even got another chance to look at a fast bowler in, in Reese Topley. And um, yeah, I think all in all, Sam Billings. It was a huge, huge uh, series for him, and unfortunately, fielding in the very first game had a shoulder injury. He, he still came out and bat, batted in the second innings and gave it a good crack. But unfortunately, it was obviously too bad for him to play a part in the rest of the series. So England's def definitely got tested. They weren't at full strength, but they still um, pushed India all the way. Fantastic. My first takeaway was obviously uh, India's wicket-taking ability in the power play, and they continued to struggle with that. Uh, although Bhuvaneshwar Kumar was outstanding, man. What a fantastic player in this series. Great to see him coming back into you know his element and into his... his Full, full form after his injury but England only lost two wickets in the power play throughout the entire series and that came in the third ODI so Jason Roy Johnny Bairstow did a, a, were a massive component of setting the tone for England and we saw in that first ODI where they put on a massive partnership and, and the rest of the order had a collapse otherwise they you know many would have fancied them to go on and win that game but in the second ODI where they won the the, the game those who put on a 110 run partnership, I thought they were fantastic. What do you think about the openers from England's point of view? Yeah, look, Roy Best, um, is, is as good as it gets in, in ODI cricket, all the stats were coming out about them. You know, so I think they've only played together 45 times, and half of that, half of those occasions, they have a, a 50 or 60 run partnership. They, you know, when they get going, they're they're tough to stop, and they do it at such a high run rate. It's it's it's, it's impeccable to watch as a as an opening pair. They they, they complement each other well, um, and they play the brand of cricket that Owen Morgan and England want to play. Yeah, and obviously Roy, 115 runs. Johnny Bairstow was the leading run scorer in the series, 219 runs. Fantastic by him. Um, you know, to see him at the top of the order flourish so well, especially in that second ODI, him and Ben Stokes, man, what a fantastic pairing uh, to, to see England over the line. Moving on to your, um, moving on to your, you know, uh, key takeaway, sorry. Uh, you would have also spoke about the bowling depth, not having someone like a Joffrey Archer there, uh, having Reese Topley in, uh, some younger guys, some new fa newer faces. What would you say, how do you how do you rate them in terms of their performance throughout the series? Yeah, a little bit hit and miss. I think um, it, the second ODI was a huge one. So it was the first time on all tour that England didn't went into a white ball game without Mark Wood or Joffrey Archer. So no ninety mile an hour bowler, no pace bowler in playing in that side. Reese Topley came in and Tom Curran came in, um, and it showed that, you know taking wicket, especially in that middle period not having that pace at the back end of the innings. It's, it's tough, especially in ODI cricket on, on pretty flat pitches, which is, these were in Pune against obviously some of the best batsmen in the world. You can be found wanting. It can be a difficult place to, to play. So that was something to keep an eye on. If, you know, obviously Wood and Archer have had, had injury problems in, in the past, which are obviously very common. Um, so when those two are out, how are England going to take wickets? Obviously, you, you really look to Adil Rashid, who had some moments, but also had some had some kind of quieter spells as well. So I think that was the main one of, one of the sorry, not main takeaways, but kind of a little sub subplot is when you haven't got that ninety mile an hour bowler, 
how are you taking your wickets? Spot on. And my, my second takeaway was obviously the Indian number six position. And we saw Hardik Pandya, who returned from injury. He was great in the T20 series and really followed that up. Oh, man, this one is sensational. 64 and 44 deliveries, 35, 35 and 19. And he just got one in the first ODA. But he really was pivotal for, in, for India to see them get, well, not just 300, but get over 300 in a massive way. And fantastic to watch the hitting ability of that young man. So he played a, a massive part to, into India's, you know, winning the series. And I, I think I have to deserve some credit for that, man. Great to see him come <laughs> in and great to see him come in and do well. Your final takeaway, Tamal, was obviously the fatigue. Uh, we touched on it at the beginning of the show, the players being in a bubble, uh, tough, tough situation, no crowd, you know, having to play on one ground. How do you think both teams, not just a, a England perspective, how do you think both teams fared with that sort of mental fatigue? Yeah, it wasn't too much, too big. It wasn't, um, as I say, one of the main points. I think I said England, especially, have been good at managing it, going, giving guys rest when needed. Um, the white ball leg has been pretty thick and fast, hasn't it? The T20s were played every other day and then, there wasn't too much gap between the ODIs either. So um, I think England has managed to stay on top of it. As you say, guys are now going into the IPL as well. So that's obviously by the end of the IPL, it'll be interesting to see if there are some guys a little bit tired and fatigued by the time they come back to England in kind of what, end of May, June time. Um, but yeah, I think I think for the most part, that's been all right. I think it's just another point I think I made was about the spin. Moen Ali, Adil Rashid, we know what they can do. And as we mentioned, Matt Parkinson was that next spinner I'm surprised England didn't give him a go just to see what he could do. As you say, we know what Adil Rashid can do. He's, you know, one of the the leading white ball bowlers in 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 world cricket and in T in T20 and ODIs. So a lot of people, a lot of journals, a lot of pundits back home were were, were kind of calling for for Matt Parkinson, see what he can do because he's got a good reputation on the English domestic circuit. So um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would have seen him, like to see him have a go, but but not to be. And I'm sure he'll get a go maybe this summer in England. Yeah, my final takeaway was about Shaker Dowan coming into it last 10 innings, averaging just over 46. And man, this guy's special, um, you know, in terms of at the top of the order, really consistent, uh, had had some massive scores. I think it was 250s in the series. Um, so he was fantastic. Obviously, third leading run score, 169 runs. Yeah, average uh, of 56.33, straight rate of 94. He was, you know, there, there was accusations made that he was going a bit too slow at the top of the order. And, and that's why India weren't able to get a even bigger score than what they were able to amass. But I think we already saw his intent, his flexibility in that third ODA where he got 67 and just 54 deliveries. So really showing the gears to his game and the differences that he has uh, in terms of his arsenal. So really a fantastic player. And I mean, him and Roy Sharma is some, some pairing at the top of the order, man. Fantastic guys to watch. Yeah, for sure. And he goes under the radar a little bit, doesn't he? With with Rohit, Virat Kohli, uh, Rishabh Pant, K.L. Rahul. Even though Shikha Dhawan is obviously a great player in his own right, he maybe slips under the radar a little bit. Uh, I think we have to have a second. Just just mention Rishabh Pant. He's he is box office. He Brilliant. continues to be every time he comes to the crease. I'm sure viewing figures um, go up. I know I'm, I make sure I'm definitely tuning in when when Rishabh Pant is is batting. Um, he does some special things that he you know he can take the games away, and I'll be I'll be sure to tune in to to Delhi Capitals games as well during the IPL this um, well, in a couple of weeks' time. For sure. And obviously, even, even Pant, as well as Kiel Rahul, who also had a brilliant series as well. Uh, we had touched on him maybe filling that number six position, but to see him bad at number five, I think he averages over 50 at that position now. So really establishing a name for himself in this ODA squad in the absence of guys like Shreyas Ayer who are suffering from injury and stuff like that. So it's great to see India have that sort of depth in terms of their ODA squad going forward. Tomorrow, let's move on to my favorite part of, of these shows, the friendly wagers, simply because I, I dominate you. However, the tide has <laughs> twisted uh, and you have you have stormed back. Uh, and I'm going to give you guys the Here results when I did the tally. But going into this series, it was 2-0 to me. Um, the T20s didn't really have any effect because we were sort of canceled out each other. But in this ODA series, Tamal has struck back. In the most runs, Virat Kohli or... Uh, Owen Morgan, we both picked Virat Kohli and, and Owen Morgan obviously suffered that injury. Kohli was magnificent as well, you know, with scores. Uh, just didn't get, was not able to get 100. The most wickets, here's where you, you took over, Tamal. You said Adil Rashid, he got three. And I said Yuzvinda Chahal and Chahal did not feature in one game. So that was a, <laughs> a bit of a tough one for me to take. And then the better strike rate coming off of that T20 series where Joss Butler had a strike rate of over 140. I think it was 147. 
he only struck at 68 in, in the ODI series. It was a rough period for him. And Hardik Pandya, who you picked, was 144.92. So now it's even that's Stevens worth two at 2-2. Two, two. If anything, that's worth 2.2 points. Point. No, two no, points. no, no, no. Come that's on, such man. A big Come victory. on, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but two all, uh, guys. So the tide is, is well set. But to my overall, um, looking forward for both teams as we wrap up here. What would you say, you know, is the biggest takeaway, the biggest learning curve for both teams uh, from this series, all the tests, the ODAs and the T20s? Oh, look, I actually answered this question on the podcast yesterday. It's tough to pick. I had to pick five points. It was tough to pick five, I think. Looking back to the tests, England obviously have a huge question mark about spin, um, both playing, turning the turning ball and also having enough spinners a good enough standard to, to exploit it. Um, that's That goes back to county cricket here. Um, I spoke about that. Uh, again, what I mentioned earlier, that backup pace bowler in white ball cricket when Wood and Archer aren't available, if we've got somebody else to come in and, and bowl quickly. Uh, ben Stokes, I think there's been a lot of talk trying to get him involved more so in T20 cricket because we saw him come up to bat number three in the ODIs with no Joe Root here and play some, you know, some brilliant innings uh, like we see him play for Rajasthan in the in the IPL as well. So there are a few, just a few points from an English point of view that uh, you can take away from from a long tour, a really long tour. As, been a, as I say, a really good cricket to watch and and, and really entertaining. It's on a good time of day here in the UK. I know the viewing figures, the viewing figures were were really good. So um, yeah, it was it was a brilliant series to watch. Fantastic. And as you said, I think you know that was from an England perspective. Even from an Indian perspective, I think they'll feel confident. Um, you know, there'll be thing, areas that both teams will get to see what to work on and what's necessary to work on going into that World Cup. But India will feel confident beating a, such a strong unit in both the White Ball Series to, you know, going into that World Cup as favourites. So, fantastic, man. Um, a lot of content coming your way, guys. That's it for this show. Uh, I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. We'll be back very soon. We've got some very special IPL content planned for you guys. And I know each and every one of you love the Indian Premier League. I mean, who doesn't? So, to my, I can't wait for that. Uh, we'll definitely be back for that. And thanks as always, man. Just be sure to follow us at Pace Journal on Twitter and Instagram. And, and just like, subscribe and share the show, guys. It's really fantastic making it and enjoying the feedback from all of you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Welcome to the Pace Journal. Pace Journal.